biggest challenge is educating these investors that are slaving away at their golden years trying to manage properties educating them like do you really realize the return on your equity is really low sure you got a really good deal originally you got a ton of equity now very little cash flow compared to what we can get you your guys's play then is to buy renovate refi um, are you guys liquidating these assets after five years or like what's your what's your strategy in the long term yeah, so our, our key is to do multiple streams of income for our investors to continue to recirculate their investment and then to 1031 exchange them into additional assets where we can buy it at a discount and then renovate. So we're looking for a great make your money going in at a discount, then buy it under market rents that need to renovate. So we got kind of both of those levels yeah. and then pull the capital out, send it back. And then when we go to sell, we exchange it forward. And so, for example, last year we bought 27 million in Jacksonville, Florida, 288 units. It's on my website, Canopy Creek. And the guy, we had to close quickly, 30 days. Guy was ill, wanted to, wanted to get out of it before, you know, if something were to happen, his partner said, let's just get out of this quickly. So we moved fast. Our investors moved fast and we locked it in. And it was, you know, all the units were unrenovated, classic, 15, 10 to 15 years untouched, which is perfect yeah. for us. Under market rents by fifty to six five hundred to six hundred dollars, we immediately went to work, improved the outside, fixed it up, started renovating the interiors as people started moving out. By the end of the year, we had reached our our exit pro forma, and we sold in December. Now we had projected an eighteen percent return over five years, mm -hmm. but we had reached it in December, and so we then traded everybody forward to three hundred and seventy two units in Houston. Life at Spring Estates. And so we upped their basis. They cash flowed tax free mm -hmm. all year long because of the depreciation. Yeah. We then sold, traded them forward. Now they're instead of instead of say a hundred percent of their investment, they're cash flowing at 170% of their investment in the next deal. And so their basis is higher. And now we're off to the races doing a unit conversion and renovation strategy at that property in Houston. And we'll just continue to trade them up tax deferred and they can continue to reset their their uh, cash flow basis. Yeah. What is the biggest frustration with capital gains tax as it leads to the 1031? Well, so the in our world, and I have a whole, if you go to investonmainstreet.com slash 1031, uh, I have a guide because I starting out in single family, I started trading through, through a 1031 exchanges into our larger multifamily assets. And lots, and I have an article in Forbes, if you go Patrick Grimes, 1031, Forbes, you're going to read it. It's all about the ben how you can be go from a landlord with tenants, toilets, and trash, trying to work on a scattered portfolio nearby you, or trying to manage away from you these smaller assets and how you can trade those, sell those off, and then work as a partner with us. We'll set up a tenant in common. You can join our investments as a partner. And so, so many investors from 500,000 to seven and a half million have been putting them as partners into our large deals in the emerging markets that we fully manage. So they're hands off at that point. And so the, big, the cha biggest challenge is educating these investors that are slaving away at their golden years trying to manage properties, educating them like, do you really realize the return on your equity is really low? Sure, you got a really good deal originally. You got a ton of equity now, very little cash flow compared to what we can get you. And we'll continue to recirculate it every three years. We'll refi out, give you that capital back, can reinvest it and continue to keep your velocity to capital high. That's the challenge is kind of educating them. Hey, you could have a better life, actually grow your basis and leave a better legacy and have a better retirement moving forward. And then doing that in time because we need them to sell their asset. We need to identify them into one of our three, one or three of our multifamily deals within 45 days. And then we'll close on one of those three within a total of 180 days. And I think that's just part of the process of educating. I think people start single family. They start thinking a little more sophisticated. They start desiring to have more experts work on their, their portfolio instead of the control. And then they kind of talk to us and then we start putting them into bigger deals that are managed by experts. Yeah, and, and I that's, that's really well said. So, <clears throat> and we were kind of talking a little bit off the... Um, off the show here about the, you know, this idea of, of 1031 and the time being really constraining and, and that kind of 
you know, being being a little bit of a challenge for a lot of people and then having to go back into a lot of syndicators won't even touch ten thirty one dollars. Yeah. You know, I've talked to mm -hmm. I've talked to hundreds and they're like, we, <laughs> we don't even touch it, you know, and it's, they leave mm -hmm. millions and millions and millions of dollars on the table, you know, for their deals because it's just too much energy and effort and, and work for, you know, the, the amount of the, the juice really just isn't worth the squeeze for them, you know, and they so they fear what they don't understand. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. it's, it's good that you've, you know, mastered that, that whole tenant in common situation and you're willing to, to go ahead and, and pull their ten thirty one dollars in because, um, you know, it's a, it's a challenge to do it's technical. And so that's, you know, and these, and this is the, the reason why this podcast exists, right? Cause it's all, it's cash flow for sure, but it's also tax flow. Like yeah. if you get in your 30% mm -hmm. every time your investment, you know, is liquidated, you're, you're paying 37% in California, you know, 20% at least in, in, you know, maybe 23% with Obamacare in Florida, right. Or your, your no income state tax, you know, states, um, you know, you're, you're still paying 23%. It, that's that's a big hit every single time when you can defer mm -hmm. that and, and you know increase that compounds you know exponentially so the 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 tax flow is is really important as well and we were talking about the deferred sales trust not to be confused with the Delaware statutory trust but you know the deferred sales trust um, which basically allows you to um, kind of bypass a lot of that work that you have to do in you know, that tenant in common thing, uh, you know, as, as you're 1031 and you can actually, um, eliminate the time constraints and, and the like kind constraints that follow the 1031. So, um, that's the, that's the deferred sales trust allows you to sell highly appreciated assets, which is also really important is because it can be more than just investment real estate and commercial real estate. You mm -hmm. could do it with a primary home. You could do it with a business. You could do it with stock. You could do it with crypto. We had a guy who sold um, a business. He sold. He got bought up by his partners. Two point six million dollar buyout. He deferred six hundred thousand in tax, and he put that money into a seventy two unit development deal in Tennessee. You know, you can't do that with, um, you know, with a ten thirty one because it's not like kind. So you you can't even do a ten thirty one for business or you know, let's say someone has Apple, right? Yeah, Apple and stock, right? Apple stock. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you get? Where are you going to put it? You know, you bought it, you bought it 15 years ago, right? And it, you rode the wave up and you want to liquidate it and diversify some a little bit. You could use a deferred sales trust. You could liquidate the asset and you could put a bunch of that money right back into one of Patrick's funds, you know, all tax deferred without the time constraints, without the, the like time constraints. So if you guys want to learn more about the deferred sales trust, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. And you can kind of, um, there's a ton of content, ton of videos, listen to podcasts like this and, um, make sure that you rate, review, subscribe. We also have a mastermind group that we do every Friday at 10 AM Pacific, 1 PM Eastern. Um, so be sure to check that out. You can, um, you know, you can see that at, uh, capital gains tax solutions.com. <laughs>